Hi, it's me, Tree. We're doing some vlogging and some classwork today. Uh, I was supposed to be at CoolieCon this weekend and was really ill. I, I'm feeling better, but today I had a migraine, so, you know, it's the all the things together. It's super fun, but I'm supposed to be at Medicon this weekend, so hopefully I will be better. But before I can do that, I have to get through teaching tomorrow, which me. It's bad when I'm like, okay, I only have 15 more class periods. I keep I, I keep remembering why I didn't like being in a formal classroom. And there's some frustration that people aren't like doing their work and historically I have been a very high strung teacher and I'm trying very very hard not to because the populations that this college serves have a myriad of issues and me being high strung and losing my everything about everything is not something they need. So we're embracing our zen, we're embracing our chill, or at least trying to fake it. So yes, so I need to do some class prep. I, I have done the readings, which um, we have three, three books in this class. One is Why Is That Art by Terry Barrett, which is kind of, it is a problematic text. It is clearly written by a cis white dude who thinks that, who was who bought into the singular genius artist myth and has absolutely no interest or concern for visual culture as it, as it pertains to film and TV and yada yada yada. So it is a problem but it's also a fairly good concise approach to the underpinnings of modern contemporary art. So we use it and under the caveat that he, he is a problem. We're also using um, Native American Art, which is a collected book. It's a series of articles that have been collected into a singular edition. Um, it's from 1999, so sometimes they're out of... they're no longer necessarily as relevant as they could be, but the information continues to be relevant. That that probably made no sense. I will explain. And the other book is Contesting Knowledge, which is basically a museum studies book. Uh, it's another collected edition of articles, and it basically, like the title says, it contests the, the assumptions of uh, of modern contemporary museums and how they have been situated historically. So that's going to be fun. But the readings for this week were the first chapter of Why Is That Art, which I had forgotten because it's been a little bit since I've been out of school and out of teaching that I yell at books when I disagree with them. Though evidently it's amusing if you're watching it. So I spent the better part of like three hours yelling at this book. I am a slow reader by the by. It's uh, how it's how I learned to cope with my dyslexia before they figured out I was dyslexic. That's part of the reason why it was so difficult for them to figure out I was dyslexic because I'd already compensated for it. The reading is chapter five from the Native American art book, which is about creating an Aboriginal art history, which was excellent. It was an excellent reading. My only wish is that it was talking about things more recently than like the early mid 80s, as far as uh, art from tribes and nations in North America. They were talking about uh, specifically about First Nations, which is Canadian or uh, Canadian tribes. That's a weird way to phrase it. Let's try that again. Canadian governmental designation of 
tribes and nations that of indigenous tribes and nations that exist within the Canadian territories are referred to as First Nations, which I think is a better name than Native Americans is by the American government or American Indian. Because First Nations at least gives the apparent, no, the word, bad word, gives the, the, it at least gestures at the fact that it is, that the indigenous peoples of North America are not a singular group of people, they are multiple cultures. So yeah, but it, it was a really good reading, it was an excellent reading, and we're going to end up having to talk about things like semiotics, because semiotics is a thing that you always have to talk about, personal, cultural, etc. It's going to be fun, but um, so they also had a sketchbook assignment to do, which is like so typical art, academy art school assignment that was lines and grids, and it, it seems ridiculous, but at the same time, it's like lines and grids, and having formal and semi-formal grids with uh, intersecting lines with added organic elements and yada 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 is really kind of the basis of all art. And even when we're uh, when even when we're talking about abstracted motifs, we can break it down and do those sorts of things. So. It's still colonialist. This is a conversation that we're having in this class tour, I'm hoping we'll be having, is whether or not art, capital A art, is an inherently colonialist racist concept. And right now I'm kind of sitting on the yes, yes it is. So we'll find out. We'll see what the class thinks. Um, I, I, should, I feel like I should also mention that my class is the vast majority of my class are Oneida and Menominee. I'm sure there are a few other tribes in there, but the vast majority of them are Oneida and Menominee. Yeah, let's talk about the the, the problems in, in an apparently white person teaching a potentially a colonialist racist thing to, to they, these nice kids. <laughs> Probably also the part of the reason why I'm having issues with the entire teaching thing. So, yeah. That's why we're, one of our books is Native American art, so we can, like, talk about things through their own culture. So it's My background in art education was about visual culture and participatory culture, so really the cultures that we bring to things. Whether they are cultures within cultures, like fandoms, or they are cultures with overarching cultures within overarching cultures like being a Niner Menominee in Wisconsin. Yeah, it's a lot. There's a lot in my head right now. Um, but before before I start like doing drawing things, I wanted to show you guys this. Check out the, this thing as I have weird stuff on it because cats. This. Which looks like a really fanciful pasty or something. But what it is, is you put it inside your water cups uh, for when you're painting. But you take these things, put them inside your water cups, either at the base or on the side. And when you're cleaning your brush, you do that, do that, and it cleans your brush better. So you need less art, or less art, so you need less water to clean your brushes and it's nicer to your brushes. So I have no idea if it works, if they work yet, because I just got them. I haven't done any like physical painting yet, but we'll find out. I'm very excited by them. And they're really soft and kind of nubbly and kind of look like something from like the ocean. So yeah, that's cool. Brushes I have not used yet. A friend of mine, before she moved to Seattle, gave me all of her like watercolor stuff, and I haven't used some of it yet. All right, so we have some grids to do.
it's me, Tree. Um, I don't know. That was just like dumb sounding. Okay, let's try that again.